life. Okay, so I've been um, speaking with someone who's had a um, um, a childhood traumatic experience, and when they sit with their feelings, um, after a while, um, the, they they feel a kind of a, a terror arise. And they feel like uh, they, they need to sort of jump away from that and distract uh, away from that. And uh, they've had some they've had some experience with how to feel the feelings, and they've had some experience with the observer. But it's like so, so it's like after a while, suddenly that it's for me it's like when you have a trauma it's like a, I would describe a trauma as just a pot, a pot of repressed feelings and some uh, belief systems associated with that. Now, when you, do, when you do feel the feelings, what you're doing is you're letting go of identifying with the thoughts and just allowing the feeling. But what if you get an, an, like a huge shock come up, almost like saying, like, back away, distract and do something else, but don't go into this. And you know, or if you were to face it, it would, it would feel like uh, you're going to die or you're going to be insane or you, you'll not return or maybe even become a cabbage or something. It's the point of no return. So, here's the thing. You see, when you're doing spiritual work, you're going to bring up... Um, uh, if you're doing really good spiritual work, you'll bring up something like death. Like your, your, um, your identity will feel like it's under threat and it's going to die. Uh, what, and your identity is, very, is literally what you believe you are. It's like the makeup of your whole life. So when you sort of... Uh, I've worked with people in 12-step groups in addiction for 10 years, and there's usually two things that are very common that come up when, the, when you're giving up addiction or something that is very much part of your identity. One is that if you go through this terrible feeling, you'll die, or the other one is you'll go insane. Those are the two common... the most common ones, you know. It's like... I can't go through this feeling because I'll either die or I'll go insane. Now, the thing to do is, if that comes up, um, is you, you want to pray for willingness to go into that feeling and not escape. And it's like, and that will, that will be like uh, facing the death of, your, of who you believe you are. And that's a good thing. So just to share my own experience, when I gave up, uh, when I started to give up my food addiction, um, and I'd had a near-death spiritual experience, and I'd, I'd met a, guy, a teacher of enlightenment, Dr. Hawkins, in America, and he talked about, and this is universal to all spiritual work, we talk about the death of the ego and the birth to eternal, eternal life. So when you're in the ballpark where you, the whole basis of your identity is threatened, uh, if you're a drug addict, uh, and addiction can not only be to drugs and alcohol, but can be to people as well, uh, when you're giving up that drug, um, then it can literally feel like you're going to die because you're losing the thing that is wrapped up w with how you perceive it, your very life. So that's the thing when, you're, when you get that thing like you're going to die and that feeling of death starts to come up. That's what you've got to go into and not escape into any form of distraction. Now, from Hawkins' work and from my own experience in, in going through food addiction, um, it's an extreme, to the extent you're addicted to whatever it is, whether it's a food or a traumatic memory or a person, as you, as you go into that, it'll feel like uh, there'll be a great reluctance to sit in that extreme, um, extreme um, in those extreme feelings. It could be traumatic, it could be feel like you're dying or you'll go insane, you'll never be able to recover. And I, I had panic attacks, and the very first panic attack that I went through lasted 20 minutes. And my ego was screaming at me like, you're going to die, and you have to use something to distract and not go through that, because it would be like facing, facing death. And then that, that was what led to you know, my now 10 years of freedom from food addiction. So understand that the, the repressed feelings of addiction, you can look at it as withdrawal. There's a limited amount you have to do. And as you feel out those repressed feelings and you don't escape through any kind of distraction, TV, drugs, alcohol, food, another relationship, um, whatever it is to escape, as you go through that, 
uh, and you feel your identity or this well of attachment or addictive attachment or trauma sort of dissolving away, you go through that and it, it's finite. At a certain point it will be like your ego attachment will dissolve away and you'll be free of that thing. It can only live if you distract, um, distract away from it. So your whole essence has got to be on um, uh, and when you want to be free of something, you, like in my experience, it has to be a high priority. It has to be the highest priority. You know, like if you want to be free, if you tell your ego, like, I just 50% want to be free, um, then your ego will very easily distract you off into putting the TV on or taking some alcohol or getting a new relationship or whatever it is. Uh, so uh, it's like just being with that discomfort. Um, when I had the when I had my first panic attack, I used and the second panic panic attack. I always share this um, because I know how extreme addiction can be to whatever it is. Um, I was willing to. I was willing. I was willing. Whatever the threat is, when you face your worst feeling, when you're giving up, whether it's alcohol, drugs, a person, or just an extreme feeling that you feel will obliterate you, who you think you are and you won't survive that if you go into that deep uh, feeling or trauma or that extreme withdrawal. Um, whatever it says, whatever the threat is, you've got to play chicken with it. So for me, what was it? It was like when I faced a panic attack, the threat was you'll die. You won't come out of this if you go through and don't distract. So that's it. So for me, it would be like, okay, then I'll f I'm willing to die, but I will not back down and go through the extreme withdrawal. Uh, other people I've guided uh, uh, who've, who've let go of extreme things, Usu the other usual one is I'll go insane. If I go through this extreme withdrawal, I'll go insane. It doesn't really matter what it is, whether you'll die, whether you'll go insane, whether you'll become a vegetable, whether you won't exist. Um, you go through that, and on the other side, you get freedom from the thing. So, praying for willingness, know it's finite. You know, like let's say um, you've got a traumatic incident. Let's say there's a hundred units. You've got to be in there and not distract for like, I don't know, like for 10 hours. And if you distract in the middle of that 10 hours, it resets it back. So like, let's say you've got 10 hours and you must not distract on anything and then you'll get through it and you'll be free forever. Like every, you know, like if, if at the end of 9.5 hours you pick up again, it will take you straight back, you know, straight back to square one. So right at the end, you've got to go through until it passes. And the thing with most addicts is they can go through whatever the addiction is or the attachment is, they can go through, but they'll pick up. And then they, they restart. So they, it's, to them, it seems like it'll go on forever and it's pointless. But you've got to like go through until, until you're through it. Um, so that's, that's the thing to do. Okay, so